Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Monday and I'd like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. The broadcast is available every weekday at 4 a.m. on the Kanguka website kanguka.com or on the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or on the Kanguka mobile app. Just type Kanguka, that's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. I would like to express sincere thanks to everyone who supports us through their prayers. May I and bless every person who takes the time to pray for the Kanguka team. We also pray for you. As I remind you every Monday, whenever you pray for us, don't forget to mention the partners of Kanguka. By partners, I mean those who support us financially so that this broadcast can continue to progress. If the Kanguka broadcast has continued until today, it's thanks to the men and women whom God uses for the advancement of this work. It's a work that requires a lot of resources and sacrifices. May I and bless everyone who supports us. We pray for you and we also need your prayers. As usual on Mondays, in this first part of the broadcast I talk about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. The second, is to pray every day. You shouldn't pray daily just because you have a problem or because you've received good news. Just as you breathe every day, you should also pray every day. It should become second nature. And the third guiding principle is, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the third principle, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. God's ways are surprising. You can never know in advance what God is planning by allowing a situation to happen. This is why we must avoid making hasty conclusions or questioning God by asking, why is this happening to me again? Oh my God, wasn't I already dealing with enough problems? Why did you allow this? Job was a man of integrity and he was righteous in the eyes of God. God had blessed him in every aspect. He had thousands of sheep, cows, and camels. He had seven sons and three daughters. The Bible tells us that he was the greatest man in the East. Sometimes, you might look around and feel like there are many people who are happy with their lives, who have everything they need. They are rich, just like Job was. And you start to complain about what you lack. They have children who are doing well in school, who have grown up well, and are successful in life. You wonder what could possibly be missing from their lives because they seem to have it all. This can lead you to complain about your own life from time to time, even if you don't dwell on it. Don't let the blessings of others lead you to lament over what isn't going right in your own life. Learn to rejoice in the success and blessings of others. If you read Job chapter 1, verses 14 to 19, you'll see that even though Job was rich, he lost everything he had in a single day. In verses 14 and 15, one of the servants came to tell Job that all his cattle had been stolen and all the shepherds had been killed. Verse 16 says that while he was still speaking, another servant came to inform him that all his sheep had been consumed by fire from heaven. And while he was still speaking, yet another servant came to say that all his children had died. Imagine receiving so much bad news in one day and losing everything in a single day. There are people listening to me who feel like their lives are a series of bad news and tough times. Some people find it impossible not to complain because they feel what they're going through is unfair. Job, too, even though he was upright and blameless before God, he reached a point where he complained until God rebuked him. He eventually repented, and God blessed him even more than before. God gave him more sheep, camels, and donkeys, and also blessed him with seven sons and three daughters. God loves you more than you can love yourself. It's true that you might be crying today, but God is not ignoring you. What saddens God is seeing someone complain as if he doesn't know them. Take courage and believe in God without complaining. I know you might say, yes, I've tried not to complain. One week it goes well, another week it doesn't. I try to do it, sometimes I succeed, other times I don't. I know it's not easy. It's easier said than done, but remember, the best things are not always easy to achieve, but by the grace of God, you will make it. Don't complain, believe in God, have faith in Him, and know that He alone will deliver you. Our God is sovereign. He does things as He pleases. He has His own plans. His ways are not our ways. We may not understand what he is doing, but we cannot keep questioning him every time. We cannot keep asking, why did you do this? Why did you allow this or that? We just need to praise him and worship him for all he has already done for us. Because we still have life, we still have the breath of life in us. That's why we can hold on to the hope that things will change.
We are now in the teaching portion of the broadcast. As usual, when we finish a book of the Bible, we start a new teaching with a new theme. Today, we're beginning a new teaching I've titled, Why Do We Fast? This is a question many Christians ask me because some of the Christians who listen to me fast but they don't even know why they're doing it. So, we need to understand why we fast. And more importantly, we'll see how to fast. Today, there are many Christians who argue and say that in the New Testament, we don't need to fast. They claim that fasting was just for the Old Testament and that in the New Testament, we don't need to fast, we can just pray without fasting. But if you read the book of Acts, which is set in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, you'll see that the disciples did fast and pray. In Acts chapter 13, we clearly see this. Verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit didn't speak just any time, but he spoke while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting. Clearly, they were fasting. This doesn't mean they didn't have food to eat, but they were fasting in the spirit of prayer. And during the fasting and prayer, that's when the Holy Spirit spoke. So, it's important to understand that the lives of the apostles were heavily based on prayer and fasting. Another passage that sheds light on fasting is in Matthew chapter 9. Here, Jesus is speaking. First, we need to understand that there were the Pharisees and the disciples of John, because John had disciples just as Jesus had disciples. Before Jesus began his ministry, John the Baptist had disciples. Some of these disciples left John and came to Jesus, but others stayed with John. They came to Jesus with a question. They asked, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? It wasn't just the disciples of John who fasted, the Pharisees also fasted. They said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? It was as if they were trying to show Jesus that they were more spiritual because they fasted, while his disciples did not. But Jesus did fast. Before starting his ministry, he fasted for forty days and forty nights. Jesus' response is very interesting. He said, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? Who are the friends and who is the bridegroom? The friends are the disciples. The bridegroom is Jesus. Remember that the word of God says the church is the bride of Christ. The verse goes on to say, But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. In other words, Jesus was saying, While I, Jesus, am with the disciples, they don't need to fast because I am here. This highlights the importance of fasting. When you fast, there is a spiritual connection. So, Jesus was saying, These disciples are with me, they don't need to fast because I am with them. Essentially, he meant, when I leave, because you know that forty days after the resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven. And when he ascended to heaven, that's when he was taken from the disciples. That's why he said, they will fast when I leave, and that's exactly what happened. When he left, they fasted, they went into the upper room until the day of Pentecost. Even after that, they continued to fast. This proves that when you fast, you connect with Jesus, even though he is in heaven at the right hand of the Father. That's why he said, now they don't need to fast. They don't need to mourn or make themselves suffer because I am here. Remember that the disciples had the power to cast out demons. But as we see in Matthew chapter 17, sometimes there were some kinds of demons they couldn't cast out. When it didn't work, they called on Jesus to intervene. In Mark chapter 4, when they were in the boat and it was about to sink, they called Jesus because he was near. And often, Jesus would ask them, How long shall I be with you? In other words, he meant, Now you call on me because I am here, but soon I will leave. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees and John's disciples, Now I am with them, but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. In other words, he was saying, There will come a day when I, Jesus, will leave. Then they will fast. So, it's important to understand that there are situations that require just a simple, ordinary prayer, and the situation is resolved. But there are other situations that require fasting. Because when the disciples came to Jesus, it was often for difficult, impossible situations they couldn't resolve on their own, and they needed Jesus' help. So, when we fast, it's often because we seek help, but later in this teaching, we'll see that fasting isn't just for seeking help, it's also for drawing closer to God. Every time we talk about fasting, we talk about sacrifice. Fasting elevates you to another spiritual level. It allows you to be on a higher level, spiritually speaking. I know many of you fast, but it's important to understand why we must fast. May I am bless you, and have an excellent day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.